gonna be Turner that wins the Daytona 500, and Nicholas Samadio wins the Daytona 500. The sands of time do not lie. Today, history will be made. The Daytona International Speedway, home of the biggest race of the year. This is the Daytona 500. Welcome to the Daytona International Speedway for the beginning of Season 6 in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. It is the Great American Race, the Daytona 500. 40 laps of action and 40 drivers ready to write their names in the history books here today at the World Center of Racing. Hello everybody, this is Napa Fan here. And Season 6 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series has finally happened. We are here at Daytona to begin the season with the biggest race of the year, the Daytona 500, the great American race. And this is a very special race, and I don't think I need to explain to you why, because most of us should be at least casual NASCAR fans, and uh, we kind of know that the Daytona 500 is a pretty big deal in real life and we're gonna make it a big deal here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series the first race of the season and uh, a lot of storylines in season 5 Tyler Selzman drove the number 19 to the championship in his final season and this season we have another retiree who's going to retire at the end of the season that is Caleb Hoffman uh, who's a six-time winner in this series he drives the number 14 this season in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series and uh, we're going to make this season very special for him. There is a hashtag on the back of his car. One more for Hoffman. Um, you know, I'm not asking you to use it, but if Caleb is a really good friend of yours or you just uh, really like the fact that he's a good driver, I, I recommend you spread that around, you know, because you really love Caleb Hoffman here in the end of the way. He's an awesome guy, and uh, I see him go. It's a little bit sad, but uh, his reasons are very nice, and uh, I'm looking forward to the future he has to bring the end of the way. And I'm looking forward to what he does in this series most of all because I have a feeling we saw Selzman doing in his retirement season. Might see Caleb Hoffman win the championship this season in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. And that number 14, it's a pretty strong car. I mean, that whole Stuart Highs racing team is pretty strong. But uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. Number 33 of Jonathan King starts on the pole position. A rookie driver... And um, he won the pole on Wednesday, the fastest time in the final round of qualifying. And uh, he's going to be starting alongside another rookie driver. That is William Johnson, a part-time driver this season, driving the number 75. And uh, both of those guys, they lock their front row starting positions on Wednesday. And they're going to lead the field of the green flag here today. The rookies are a big story this season. We got 20 rookies this season in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Half of the field in this race. Actually, we have 21 overall, but we got 20 in this race. And uh, it's a 50-50 chance that we'll get another rookie winner in this race. 
If you want to count Jesse Turner being a rookie in the first season, theoretically everybody was a rookie in season one. If you want to count it like that, this race has been won by rookies four out of the five times it has been run. And the rookies definitely do a fantastic job. But they don't really return too often. The only defending Daytona 500 champion in the field is Jesse Turner in the number 43. He won the first one over two years ago, and he's the only one still around here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. How about that? He's a great driver, and I don't really see him leaving anytime soon. But anyways, you guys have waited long enough for this. Go ahead and give the command to fire these engines up and begin points racing for season number six of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Let's stand it down trackside for the command to fire the engines. Gentlemen, start the engines. And a great command there to get these guys fired up. And we're ready to get this one started. The Daytona 500, the biggest race of the season. And it's going to be huge. It's 40 laps of action here today around the Daytona International Speedway to begin season number six of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. And we got ourselves a rookie. John Fitting won the pole on Wednesday. He's going to be starting alongside William Johnston in row number one. Our dual winners from yesterday, Richard Kinghart in the number 19. I mean, that number 19 is a good ride. He won the championship last year. Let's see him in victory lane here today. He starts alongside Isaac Nichols in the number 83, who won dual race number two. Row three, Donovan Dufit in the number 18, and the Joe Gibbs Racing Team. Uh, was 1-2 in duel number one. Josh Crash, the owner of that team, they did a very good job in duel number one, getting 1-2 in that race. Number 15 there is Eric Almaner, another part-time driver in the field, but he is the highest starting veteran in today's race. And uh, something special there for Eric Almaner, driving number 15 for Premium Motorsports. Daniel McMillan in the number 95 starts alongside Blaine Keys in the number 48. Lane Key is also a veteran driver, but he has never won a points-paying race in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, and neither has Eric Gomenhart. So the first winner that we have in this series is Dane Ammon, who's a part-time driver in the number 51. He's not a rookie, of course, because he's won before. He won back in Season 2. That was the last time he raced in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. And if you remember Season number 2 in the Daytona 500 that season, he just barely, and I mean... As barely as you get, got beat out by Nicholas Sandy at the line and lose that one. He starts alongside number 27, Alex in a row. And row number six, Stuart Gren had a fantastic season, number five. And the Mellow Yellow Smooth Fest winner is Marty Johnson. 100 miles here today at the Daytona International Speedway. 40 laps of action. And you guys have waited long enough for this one. The pace car is going to pull off. And the season six Chick fil A Cup Series Daytona 500 is green! the line. Lap number one is going to be led by rookie Jonathan King, our pole sitter here for the Daytona 500. How about Donovan Dufit, number 18. He started fifth for this race. He's already three wide to the inside for the lead. And we're three wide throughout the whole field on lap number two of this race. Watch out for that four wide. You know when they go four wide here at Daytona, it usually creates chaos and uh, you might see it kind of early here today. Did not see a crash in the middle of the duel, and I kind of feel like this thing is just winding up and ready to explode at any moment. Donovan Duthin in the number 18. Rookie season here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, but he's been racing since 2015. He's going to lead lap number two for Joe Gibbs Racing. Daniel McMillan on this inside lane in the number 95, another rookie driver to the series. 
Um, but he won a race in the Hearns Elimination Series at Indianapolis, so he's won in another fantastic racing venue. And uh, here he is now in the middle lane blocking our pole sitter, Jonathan King. Number 95 to the inside of Donovan Duthit, and here he comes, Dane Ammon, the number 51. Remember season two, if any of you guys were watching back then, that was one of the most memorable finishes we have seen in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. There was no margin of victory, but uh, Nicholas Samadio won the race over Dane Ammon in that one. Oh, and a caution already on the racetrack. Matt Delio, the season four champion, is upside down. And an early caution here in the Daytona 500. That's Jay Jefferson. He is also upside down in the number 31. This happened back in the pack. Normally when we crash here at Daytona, it happens up front. We were not focusing on the back of the field this early on in the race. And already, like it is every year, a quick caution in the Daytona 500. Dane Ammon won the race back to the line. And he will most likely lead the field to the restart when we get to the restart here in the Daytona 500. The Season 4 champion, that is Matt Dalio. He was the runner-up in the Season 5 championship as well. And the latest defending champion that still races here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series is out. Jay Jefferson, a rookie driver in the number 31, also went upside down. We had two flips. You see Ryan Madden with damage as well. And Ricky Stevenson might have been involved as well. He's a rookie driver driving for Front Row Motorsports. But that might have been it. I don't think anybody else was involved in this one. And that is very odd to see two cars flip, but them be pretty much the only guys involved. Now, a little thing about this race. It's 40 laps long. There are no scheduled pit stops. But it sometimes is a stretch to make it the whole way without uh, coming in. So Isaac Nichols is going to play it safe right here. Come in, get some fuel. So he knows he can make it to the end of the race. Now, usually these guys can make it to the end. But that is pending on how many cautions we have and how many caution laps. I mean, that was a quick gas and go for Isaac Nichols. And, uh, man, he was in the pit. Was he in the pits for like one second? That's like a Formula One pit stop there for Isaac Nichols in the number 83 for BK Racing. Now, Ricky Stevenson and Ryan Madden, they're going to get back out onto the racetrack. But unfortunately for Matt Delio and Jay Jefferson, they're going to be out for the rest of the race. Dane Ammon is the leader in the number 51. He wants to win this race. Let me tell you that. We'll see what he does in the restart. But first, we got to review the crash. It brought up the first caution here in the Daytona 500 for Season 6 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Well, they were going four wide in the back of the pack. Usually when they go four wide here at Daytona, it's at the front of the pack. But in the back of the pack, we weren't focusing on it. And this is what happened. Ryan Madden, the fourth car on the inside. Actually, the first car on the inside, I should say. He pushed up in the Ricky Stevenson, Matt Delio, and Jay Jefferson. And <laughs> just physics pushed Jefferson and Delio upside down. Only about five guys, maybe six guys majorly involved in this crash. And two of them went upside down, Matt Delio and Jay Jefferson. It's a very unfortunate crash for these guys this early on in the race as well. Dalio and Jefferson are going to get knocked out. Look at that 31. That is an unpleasant ride for the rookie driver there, Jay Jefferson. A couple wins at Darlington in his career. I believe he's won at another place as well. I can't remember where. But I'm pretty sure he's a three-time winner on Napa Van coming into Season 6 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. And it uh, doesn't look like he's going to win here today. Now, if you flip your computer upside down, he's just going in reverse. But uh, not really a true case there for the number 31. And you see the 88 upside down as well. Very unfortunate crash. And lap number three of the Daytona 500. I'm going to replay this crash in real time. Ryan Madden, Ricky Stevenson, Matt Delio, and Jay Jefferson. A little note that I would like to point out here. When they're in a three or four wide situation like this, normally it's the second car on the inside that shoots up the racetrack and the guy who's on the way inside usually does not get involved it was not the case this time and I think that's why both Dalio and Jefferson went up into the wall he had two cars pushing up on those two guys instead of just one like it normally is so that's what happened Madden I think Stevenson slightly came down clip Madden Madden couldn't save it in the 77 up into the wall he started last place for this race so did or 38 actually also was deep in the field. And you see Dalio and Jefferson. I think Jefferson took the wildest ride there. He stayed upside down that number 31. You see the sparks right where the driver's compartment is. That's an unfortunate one for Jay Jefferson. And Matt Dalio, who is the latest champion of this series. He won the Season 4 championship. 
And he's still going to go without another, without winning the Daytona 500. Very unfortunate for the very experienced driver there, number 88. He's driven in every single season in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, but uh, not going to get the win here today. Go on board one of these guys. Won't be Daly or Jefferson because we uh, really won't get much with them being upside down. But uh, we'll go on board somebody and we'll get to the restart here for the Daytona 500. On board with Julius Anderson in the number 20. He was right behind this crash when it occurred. And you see him drive by there and those cars going upside down. That must have been a wild ride for those two drivers and a wild view. For the number 20, the rookie driver of Julius Anderson, he should be able to continue. Not sure he's going to be able to contend, however, because he did get hit a little bit in that number 20 machine. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a quick commercial break. Then we'll get to the restart here in the Season 6 Chick-fil-A Cup Series Daytona 500. Do you want great racing action? Then subscribe to GMS Productions, home of the NRLOA Ortho Cup Series for forcing the issue early and John Art gets tapped behind from the number 15 and the Zero Racing Reddit Truck Series. Or just hit the wall a ton, so did Art and Nichols. GMS Productions, home of some of the best NR2003 racing around. Back here at the Daytona International Speedway for the Season 6 Chick-fil-A Cup Series Daytona 500. A beautiful day here at Daytona Beach, Florida. And number 51, Dane Ammon, the runner-up in this race in season number two, and uh, memorable finish back then. He's a part-time driver this season, but uh, he is driving full-time on his mind right now. Definitely not letting off the gas pedal in this race, if you know what I mean. He wants it so bad after that bitter loss in season two. He leads the field right now with Donovan Dufit, Herr Jalarb and Alonzo, Daniel McMillan, an outside pole sitter, William Johnson with Al Legacy, Jonathan King, Caleb Hoffman in his final season, Matt Tuck, and Richard Kinghart. Top 10 coming to the restart here in the Daytona 500. It's Dane Ammon leading the field. Pace cars pulled off. Lap 8 of 40. We're back underway here in the Great American Race. And uh, one thing I love about doing the Chick-fil-A Cup Series is that we can do single-file restarts. I love single-file restarts. It, it's just as fair as fair can be. And uh, if you're second, you're second. If you're first, you're first. Nobody alongside you at the start. But exiting turn two, you might get somebody alongside you. That's Donovan Duthick going for the lead to the inside of Dane Ammon. And the rookie driver, he's been racing since 2015, so he has experience. Race in season two of the Chick or the Turkey Hill series, I should say. His first ever run in the Chick-fil-A Cup series. He's driving for Joe Gibbs Racing, Josh Crash, the owner of this team. And they did good in the Mel Yellow duel yesterday. And uh, they might have a good chance of winning here today. Donovan Duthit will lead lap number eight here in the Daytona 500. Daniel McMillan for Levine Family Racing. That team owned by Nick Smith. And uh, 95 is going to go to the inside, and we got a bunch of two wide going on, but don't expect it to stay that way for long. It's going to be three wide in just a couple of laps. Al Legacy and Caleb Hoffman, here he is in the number 14. You know, I think a lot of you guys know that me and Caleb are fantastic friends. But he's also a fantastic driver as well. Tied all-time in this series with six wins. He's the second all-time winningest driver on Napa Fan. If he actually were to win today, he'd tie Garrett Sonor as the all-time winningest driver on this channel. He's a great driver, just like Selzman was, and he's retiring. I mean, Selzman did it last year. I have a feeling that Hoffman's going to get a win here in the regular season, making it into the chase, and he's going to make a run for the championship. But, hey, I could be wrong. This my, this my sense. You know my sense sometimes. I can just sense some things happening, you know? Al Legacy taking the lead, a rookie driver there in the number 34 for Front Row Motorsports. Brad Stover is the owner of Front Row, and we're four wide again. We had another four-wide situation here. They crashed earlier on deep in the field, but this time it's up front. Dane Ammon in the wall. Matt Tuck around. Donovan do thin, and they're crashing yet again. And Ammon is spinning in the 51. Is that going to be it? Yes, it is. Oh, Ricky Stevenson coming in there. A full head of steam. 
He could have run into somebody, but another quick caution here in the Daytona 500. This happened in Season 4. We had two quick cautions. I believe Legacy won the race back to the line. Just a little too antsy yet again. And the unfortunate victim is the guy who wants to win this race so much, Dane Ammon. He got spun around there. Reminds me a lot in Season 4. We had Cameron Gaju crash very similarly to that where he was the only guy involved. He had all these guys coming towards him and practically nobody was involved with the exception of him, of course. And the uh, same happened here to Dane Ammon, the number 51, a part-time driver. They were going four wide. They could have been a lot worse considering that it was up front, but uh, fortunately only a few guys got involved. Donovan Dufit has damage in the 18. He might have to come down the pit lane. Trying to see if anybody else got caught up in this one. They might have been the only two who really gained any significant damage from this accident. You see Ricky Stevenson near the end of that one, who is the teammate to our leader right now, Al Legacy. He came in with a full head of steam. He could have run into somebody and uh, caused a major crash, but fortunately he didn't. I believe he was trying to race back to the line. He did not slow down. Well, the rest of these guys did. Rookie driver there. I see Ammon coming down the pit lane. Matt Tuck was also involved in the number 42. I remember that now. He got spun around. Of course, we will review the crash. Alonzo's down the pit lane. I don't know if he was involved, though. Oh, he does have damage, though, in the number 10. You can see it there on the right side of his race car. Now, Dane Ammon here. See him coming down his down the pit lane into his pit. He probably will be able to continue, but he's not going to, unfortunately, be able to contend in that number 51. Those are the only three guys down the pit lane. So let's go ahead and review the crash. It happened on lap number 10 of this race to bring out the second caution in the Season 6 Chick-fil-A Cup Series Daytona 500. Well, when you're going four wide at Daytona, it, it just doesn't work. You just It's just one of the most common things known to man. It really is. Donovan Dufit here, number 18. I believe McMillan might push up into him. And uh, that sends the 18 up into Dane Ammon. And Ammon, he just has nowhere to go. I mean, the wall to his outside. He actually bounces off the wall. I don't think Dufit got into him. He was just a little too close for comfort. He bounced into the wall. And you see Dufit go around Alonzo into the outside wall a little bit. I believe that William Johnson also got maybe a piece of this one in the 75. He did. You see Matt Tuck there in the 42. He flat spotted his tires along with Alonzo, I do believe. And you see Dane Ammon. The only driver who actually went around. These guys, they stopped. Fantastic job of these guys not arca breaking into the 51. And, uh... It is nice to see that there was only one who was majorly involved in this one. And it, was, it wasn't even that bad as the first crash we had with uh, Jay Jefferson and Matt Dalio. But uh, fortunately for those guys, and you see Ricky Stevenson, he came in here. Look at this, number 38, just way too fast coming into that crash scene there. Fortunately, there was nobody sideways or stopped on the racetrack for him to run into. But he could have run into somebody, caused a big crash there. But anyways, number 51, that's unfortunate. He really wanted to get this win. I know it because of what happened in Season 2. But uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. You're going to get more chances, though. Don't worry. We're going to keep on doing this series for quite a while. And a replay is crash in real time. See number 51 there of Dane Ammon on the outside lane. And I think I think he was reacting to do fit moving up a little bit, and he just hit the wall, and that's what caused this crash. Number 51 around. You see all these guys try to avoid them. They did, and uh, that's a good thing there. Still got quite a few guys out there on the racetrack with a chance of winning. I mean, we've got Jesse Turner out there, the only defending Daytona 500 champion in the field. Noah Cars, number three, is a fan favorite. Uh, pretty sure he gave the command for this race. Pretty sure he's going to be the guy who gives the command for this one. Because I'm going to go back and edit it, and I think his is going to make it for this one. Uh, but number 22 there, that's Adam Lewis, the rookie driver. Ryan Madden was involved in the first crash. You see Ricky Stevenson, he's slowing down, letting all these guys go because he passed them. But uh, fortunately, not too many guys involved in that crash. Still a lot of great drivers out there looking to get this win in the Daytona 500. The guy who's leading is Al Legacy. And number 34, a rookie driver driving for Front Row Motorsports. We're not going to do a commercial break this time. We're going to get right to the restart here in the Daytona 500. So here we go. Let's see what Al Legacy does here in the Daytona 500. Back here at the Daytona International Speedway. Number 34, Al Legacy. A rookie driver leads the field for Front Row Motorsports. Right behind him, it's Caleb Hoffman in his final season of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. The funny thing is, he announced his retirement last August 
it's gonna be a whole year before he actually retires from the time he announced it. I remember I was uh, on our youth group retreat when he announced it, and I was just like, you know what, man, that's a good thing for you to do. I'm gonna miss you, but uh, I respect the reason why he's doing it. He's doing so, you know, he's retiring because we got a lot more drivers coming in. We want to race. He wants to make room for those guys, and uh, that's a really respectful move there by Caleb Hoffman. And who knows? Lord might bless him with a win here today, running second in the number 14. Daniel McMillan running in the third position right now. The Season 3 champion of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, who has not won a Chick-fil-A Cup Series race since he won the Season 3 finale. That's Cameron Garlington in the number 47. Lane Keyes has never won a race in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series before, but this guy has. Garrett Tenor, the six-time winner in this series, the all-time winningest driver on Napa fan, running in the sixth position. Other guys, you got Marty Johnson, Donovan Duthit, and Jonathan King back in there at the top nine. Coming to the restart. Here in the Daytona 500 for Season 6 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Now, I hope these guys, they don't crash anymore. We can race this thing to the end without another caution. That would definitely be exciting. But uh, one little thing here. Number 34 won this race last year with Josh Marzak uh, driving the car. It's now in the hands of Al Legacy. Legacy has already won a couple of times. Got a little more experience, and I think this 34 might have a chance. But there's a lot of other guys who want to win this race who have never won it before. I mean, basically 38 other drivers who have never won this race before. And I'm not counting Legacy because he's leading right now. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, 39 drivers in this field who has never won this race before. They want to win it. Let me tell you that. Al Legacy is going to lead lap 15 here in the Daytona 500. Here comes Daniel McMillan. Now, both of these drivers that came in about the same time here on Napa Fan. First elimination series. And uh, here they are, side by side in the Daytona 500 in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. How about Blaine Keys in the number 48? Like I said, he's never won before in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, but he did win the Aero Electric Pro Series Championship. So uh, he's definitely a good driver. He's better than he was when he started, I can tell you that much. And he might come away with a win this season. Who knows? It might be today here in the Daytona 500. He's got help from Eli Brighton, number 13. That number 13 almost won this race last year when Nicholas Samadio was driving the car. Samadio almost won his second Daytona 500. He's not racing this season, unfortunately, but hopefully he'll return in a future season here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Love having that driver around the Season 2 Daytona 500 champion. Of course, Dane Ammon, you know, he probably doesn't like me talking about Nicholas Samadio because of what happened in Season 2, but you know what? Samadio still won that thing fair and square. And uh, that's going. That's one of the most historic races that we've ever had. Who knows? We might get another historic race here today. And uh, who knows? It might be another dead heat at the line. It's happened twice before here at Daytona. And uh, it's happened one other time on that. It's possible it could happen here again in the Daytona 500. Rookie driver here, Anthony Lopez in the number 72, running to the inside of Eli Bright no, and um, Lane Keys. I'm saying Noah Cars. He's driving the number three this season. Not the number 48, but Noah Cars, I believe he's in this pack. He's kind of back in there. Good place to be right now. Still early on, and uh, these guys, they might get a little too antsy up front. They might crash. It might be good to be back there so you can avoid it. But Blaine Keys there on the outside there. It was passed by Anthony Lopez. Lopez now going to go to the outside. Try to block Blaine Keys. Could not do it. He's going to block the middle lane. I believe Keys still has a nose on the 42. He does. Another rookie driver here of Alexander Rowe. And uh, not too long ago, we had Julius Anderson slightly involved in that crash. That first crash that involved Matt Dalio and uh, Jay Jefferson. And here he is running up front in that very good-looking Circle K machine. I like the looks of that car. And uh, I think it's pretty fast as well. He's going to the inside of Alexander Rowe for the lead. A couple of rookie drivers running up front. Quite a few rookie drivers running up front. Remember what I said? This race has been won by a rookie driver officially three out of five times. And if you want to count Jesse Turner, because that was the first season, of course, the first ever race that I did, four out of five times. So... This race loves the rookies, and they are dominating right now here in this Daytona 500. But Trey Barto in the number four, Jesse Turner in the 43. They're on that inside lane. They know what they're doing. Let me tell you that. Trey Barto's driven the four all six seasons of this series. The only driver to race the same number in every single season up to this point. And uh, Barto definitely loves that Stuart Haas racing team and that number four ride. Daniel Bouchard in the number 11 for Joe Gibbs Racing and the number 19 of Richard Kinghart for Joe Gibbs Racing and Julius Anderson's also for Joe Gibbs Racing. Josh Crash having a pretty good speed weeks right here. 1-2 um, and duel number 1 there for that team and here they are running all in the top 10 with the exception of Dufit who was involved in that last crash. 
Derek Hamill in the number seven. He made his debut in the NRLA USF 2000 series, and you know what? He might make it four wide. Come on, go back down there, Black Barto. He's going to do so. We're going to remain three wide at the halfway point. It's led by Richard Kingart, who won Mellow Yellow Duel number one yesterday. Richard Kingart in the championship ride. He might very well get it done here today. Hamill and the number seven to the inside of Richard Kinghart. And you got Trey Barto, Jesse Turner here on this inside lane. We got a couple of veteran drivers mixed in with a bunch of rookies right now. And uh, that's definitely going to make it very interesting. But it's good to see the new guys and the old guys mixing it up. And it definitely shows the experience out of these guys because they know what they're doing. Let me tell you that much. Barto should be smart enough not to make it four wide here. But these rookies, they might not be as patient. Just keep that one in mind. I say keep it in mind a lot. But just keep it in mind. Kinghart still out front. Number 19 looking strong for Joe Gibbs Racing. He won the dual race. And I think that 19 is going to have a good shot at this victory. Alexander Rose making this outside lane work now. Seems like the inside lane has kind of stalled a little bit here. And the outside lane seems to be working a little bit better. Alexander Rose driving for RCR. That team is owned by Matthew Phillips. And uh, number 3, Noah Cards. Number 31, Jay Jefferson is already out of this race. He flipped in that first crash. But uh, RCR doing pretty good. Uh-oh, here we go. It's like this every year, guys. Dane Am in a slow car holding up the field. Derek Hamill's pulling away. Nobody's getting around this number 51 yet. They're finally doing so. And it's the same story every year in this race. We have an early crash. Then we have slow guys out there on the racetrack. They split the field up. And then it becomes a high-speed chess match. And that's when it gets very interesting because then it narrows down to a a few guys who can win the race. Now, Derek Hamill, he's the leader, but he has no help. Got these guys. They're going to swallow him up. They're trying to get around this 51. They're actually going single file around him here. Oh, Blaine Keyes really getting held up. Same with Al Legacy. Restarted first. That is unfortunate for these guys getting held up by Dane Allen, but it's still early on. There's still quite a bit of time in this race, and uh, these guys still going to have a chance at winning this Daytona 500. And Richard Kinghart, he's back out front of number 19. I'm telling you, this guy is looking very good right now. I mean, like I said, he's in the championship ride. Tyler Selkman drove that thing to a championship last year. Well, he's pulling out here, and uh, that's not too good. Derek Hamill, he was so slow because he had no help that he actually held everybody behind Kinghart up. And now they're going to swallow up Kinghart. The driver's in this pack. How about Jordan Lopez? He won his first ever start here on Napa Fan in the Thanksgiving 500 last year. He's in the number 17. His teammate is Garrett Sinor. If you got a team like that, team like teammate like that, yeah, boy. If you got a teammate like that, you're bound to do some wonders. And that number 17 won a championship in season one with Roger Carruth driving the machine. Who knows? Jordan Lopez might be the next Roger Carruth for that number 17 machine for Roush Fenway. Eric Almanhart in the number 15. He raced his way into the Daytona 500 yesterday in the Mellow Yellow Duel. An apart time ride he's never won before in the Chick fil A Cup Series, but he's won the NRLA big one. That's coming up in two weeks, by the way. And here he is on this inside lane. Jordan Lopez is just taking the lead. And look at this the pack is formed back up. Normally, we don't see that with these guys. Normally, if they get stuck behind a lap car, you're going to have a good maybe 10. 12 guys who do not rejoin the pack throughout the race, but uh, most of these guys rejoined the pack and they're racing for this win here at Daytona. Anthony Lopez, a rookie driver here to the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. If I'm not mistaken, yesterday was his first ever start on this channel. And number 72, that's a full-time ride. TriStar Motorsports, that's owned by Aiden Shepard. And uh, that team might be very strong. These single car teams are looking strong. It's good when you have a single car team because that's all you focus on. You don't focus on all the other teams. And uh, in the owner's championship, the way the owner's championship is going to be is the amount of teams all your drivers receive divided by the number of drivers you have on your team. These single car teams, they win the race. They get the full 40. Forget how it's going to be this season, but uh, you'll figure it out at the end of the video. But they get the full win. They don't have to divide because they divide by one because they're a single car team. So the owners of these single car teams, they might be an advantage in the owner's championship because they only own one car. They don't have to divide off all these other cars. But nonetheless, I kind of feel that uh, Joe Gibbs Racing is going to have a strong day. they got three of their cars right now in the top 15. One of them is deep in the field, I do believe. He still should be out there. That is the number 18 of Donovan Dufit. He is still out there on the racetrack. 2.84 seconds behind. And we got some slower cars here. Ricky Stevenson, Heritage Alonso, Ryan Madden, Noah, or, uh, 
Not Noah Cards. It's Matt Tuck this year in the number 42. Noah Cards drove that 42 last season. They could be closing in on our leaders here soon, but they are a little ways behind, and they are drafting with each other, so they're going a little bit faster. We might not necessarily catch up to them before the end of this race. But right now, it's Eric Altmanhart, Anthony Lopez, and now Julius Anderson to the inside. Three wide for the lead. A bold move there by that Joe Gibbs racing driver. Eli Bright, Al Legacy on this inside lane. I'm telling you, these rookies, they are shining this season. Or at least they're shining in this race so far here in the Daytona 500. Doing a fantastic job. But one thing about these rookies, they're going to be a little bit more aggressive. They almost went four wide there. I thought they were going to go four wide, but they didn't. And Eli Bright, a great push on this inside lane. And here we go. We got some veteran drivers moving up here. Reagan Whitlock in the 78. Uh, that's the Furniture Row Racing Team owned by Nathan Stapleton. And uh, those guys definitely very ambitious this season. Number 37, JTD Doherty Racing. I've said a lot about them this season so far in Speedway. Cameron Gaju owns a team. It's Stuart Gratton and Cameron Garlington. Uh, you got a past champion. And this guy was really strong last season. That's Stuart Gratton in number 37. Those are two very good drivers. Expect them to do wonders this season here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. I really think they're going to be strong. They're moving their way up. And you know, Al Legacy, he was stuck behind Dane Ammon not too far, not too long ago. He has gone to the lead in number 34. He led the field to the green flag under the last restart. And now with 11 laps to go in the Daytona 500, he is going to attempt to take the lead away from Eli Bright. Bright did, in fact, lead with 11 laps to go. But this number 34 is going to have a good chance. And I, I really think we might not necessarily hit lap traffic. You know what? We're going to hit Dane Ammon again before we hit these guys because these guys here are driving around Dane Ammon. Well, uh, this pack here, they are storming around this racetrack very fast. Uh oh, there we go again. Stuart Gratton's going to make it four wide late in the going. Reagan Whitlock, Anthony Lopez, Eric Almaner. Will we have the big one? Yes, we will. Gratton around in the 37, and they're crashing behind. Almaner around, Anthony Lopez, Garrett Tenor hit the 15 hard. And I think Turner might have just hit a car back in there. He did. The only Daytona 500 champion in the field. And a late caution here in the Daytona 500. Stuart Gretton, Alexander Rowe was involved. Anthony Lopez, Eric Almanhart, Jesse Turner in the number 43. That's a tough one. This one is going to get interesting because we've now, I don't think we've ever had a late race restart in this race before. Eli Bright is leading the field right now in the number 13. Then it's Julius Anderson, the number 34 of Al Legacy. Noah Cars, Reagan Whitlock, Adam Lewis, Cody Sill, Blaine Keyes, <laughs> Daniel Bouchard, and Jordan Lopez. I'm telling you, we don't really have many experienced drivers running up front right now. This is going to go to a rookie, most likely. It's It's got to go to a rookie. I'm not going to have enough time for somebody back in here to win this thing. Eli Bright is the leader. And that was an unfortunate crash that happened. I see Jesse Turner in the number 43 involved. Stuart Gratton went around. I was actually hoping he wasn't going to get involved in that one. He was on that inside lane there. Now, are any of these guys going to come down the pit? Looks like Garrison North's going to try to stay out there in the number six. He was involved in this crash, but he has damage to his race car. And he's saying, hey, that's my spot there, Isaac. Give it to me. I say we're going to have about six laps to go when we restart. That's enough time for these guys back in here to get to the front. It's possible. Like, back in here, I say, like, you know, you got Bartow, Elijah Gordon, Cameron Garland's back in here. They're going to have a chance. They're going to have a chance, but I just don't see it happening. I think it's going to come from the top five, probably. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my money on Julius Anderson right now. Just my just my feeling, you know what I mean? I just, have, I just have a feeling. He was involved in that crash earlier on in this race. You know, you just, you know I just have a feeling, you know? You just get those feelings sometimes, you know what I mean? Tristan Allen coming down the pit lane, and some guy's going to get knocked out from this one. Turner's most likely going to be done for the day. Um, Almond Hart in the 15 as well. Let's go ahead and see what happened. To bring out the third caution and what hopefully will be the final caution here in the Season 6 Chick-fil-A Cup Series Daytona 500. And they were four wide yet again, exiting turn number four. When will these guys learn? I tell you, Reagan Whitlock, Anthony Lopez, Eric Almond Hart. I think Lopez slightly came down on Whitlock. They did, and that's why 
The number 37 got clipped. He went up the racetrack. Anderson barely missed this one in number 20. And I said he might have a chance of winning this thing. Alexander Rowe, nowhere to go in the 27. See, Jordan Lopez, he's in the middle of all this. Same with Isaac Nichols. A lot of these guys slowed down for this one. But this was probably the biggest crash of the race so far. See, I'm going to go around. Sinor spun there as he hit him. I, I don't think Sinor is going to have a chance. I mean, he did, you know... He did cross the line. Look at where he crossed. He actually crossed the line backwards, and that's actually the position he's in, and that's the position he took. Uh, but then you see here, I think John Arndt came in there pretty hard, and you see Turner in the number 43. He ran into that 15. See Lopez, Tristan Allen, Gratton back in there involved. We've seen worse. I mean, we've seen worse today in this race, but still, unfortunate to see all those there's like very experienced drivers like Sinor and Turner getting involved in that crash. Just, uh... Way it goes sometimes, and uh, that's racing for you. Replay this one in real time following Anthony Lopez in the number 72. That 37 goes around as he came down on Whitlock, and uh, see Sonor hit Almanhart there. Turner hit that 72 hard, and that's why Turner's going to get knocked out in this race. Tristan Allen also in there, and you see these guys involved. Just. Another day at the Daytona International Speedway in the Daytona 500, I tell you. Anyways, this one is going to get interesting because we got a lot of inexperienced drivers um, up front here for this one. And a lot of chances at guys getting their first career win in this series. And, hey, maybe even their first career win. <laughs> That's Adam Lewis. I don't think he's ever won before on Napa Fan. I think the rest of these guys have. But that number 22, he might pull it off. We're just going to have to see Daniel Bouchard. He's never won before either. And we're just going to have to see Richard Kinghart. I don't know if that's damage or not. It could just be a glitch. But uh, Kinghart was one of the stronger guys in that uh, green flag run there. I think he's going to have a chance as well. you got Nichols, McMillan back in here, Skinlart, a lot of rookies. But these rookies are good rookies. They have a lot of experience heading into this series. It's not like, you know, most of these guys, they have raced in a prior season. You know, prior series here on this channel. It's not like this is their first series. For most of these guys, at least. But, hey, you know what? I would not be surprised if somebody back in here who has a lot of experience, say I'm talking like Elijah Gordon and Darlington Barto, they could. They could. It's it's slight. There's a slight chance, but they could work their way up front and possibly just surprise us all. But it's going to be something else. You got Marty Johnson as well. You know, I'm completely overlooking him again. He won the Meliola Smooth Fest, theoretically, out of nowhere. I wasn't paying attention too well, but, you know, he, he was kind of out of nowhere to win that race on Monday. So, hey, Marty Johnson, he could win the Daytona 500. That would be something. We'll just have to see when we restart. Quick commercial break. Subscribe to this guy, whoever he is. And uh, we'll get right back to the Daytona 500 after this short commercial break. Roll and pretty smart Emily Anderson bouncing off each other. Back here at Daytona for the season six Chick-fil-A Cup Series Daytona 500. A late race restart. This one is going to get exciting. I think it's six laps to go till the finish of this race. A rookie is leading. That's Eli Bright in the number 13. This number 13 won in season two and almost won last year. It's a good, strong car. Jermaine Racing. Jonathan Reigns, the owner. They might be running up front late in the going. Julius Anderson for Joe Gibbs Racing. Josh Crash, his team has been doing a great job in this race. Let me tell you that. And I think Julius Anderson might be the guy to pull away with. It. We're just going to have to see. Al Legacy, number 34. Number 34 won this race last year. Legacy, a strong driver to watch out for. Noah Cars, he has never won before on Napa Fan. I was pointing at Adam Lewis, but this guy, he's been racing quite a while. He's never won a race on Napa Fan. How would it be if that first win would be the Daytona 500? Driving the number three, who won in the real thing? Last Sunday night in the Coke 600. Hello, that three might be kind of lucky right now. Reagan Whitlock rounds out the top five. And you'll see the top ten when we get that ticker up. The green flag is back in the air. Six laps to go in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series Season 6. Daytona 500. There goes Anderson. But Legacy's making it four or three wide for the lead. Three wide for the lead means these guys are going to catch up here. You see these guys will spread out right now. 
I think Sinor is falling back here in the number six. He just does not have the power in his car to go the whole way. He had that damage from that crash. He's just not going to have a chance, unfortunately. But uh, still a long season left to go. And here we go. Julius Anderson now front. Coming to five laps to go. The big question is, will this pack get any bigger? Because... These guys are spread out. Something wrong with Cody Sill. They're trying to get around Cody Sill here. The number one, he's not run too fast. See Cameron Garland trying to get around him, not able to do so. I, I just don't know. We're just going to have to see. Did I see somebody going around back in there? I think I was just seeing somebody making a move. I think we're still green. Yeah, we're good. Back up front here at Daytona. Al Legacy and Julius Anderson. They're side by side for the lead. And here we go. Blaine Keys, he is not waiting. The number 48 to the inside of Noah Cars and Eli Bright for the third position while they still battle side by side for the lead between the 34 of Al Legacy and the 20 of Julius Anderson. I called Anderson as the as the possible winner. I just have a feeling he's gonna win this thing. He's he's got a good chance. We're just gonna have to see. Here's Marty Johnson. He was pushed to the win in the Mellow Yellow Smooth Fest. He might repay the favor to somebody else, and that might just be Blaine Keys in this race. But it's four laps to go in the Season 6 Chick-fil-A Cup Series, Daytona 500, and a lot of guys still in contention to grab this victory. Blaine Keys, three wide to the inside for the lead here at Daytona. He has never won a Chick-fil-A Cup Series race before, but he won the Aero Electric Pro Series Championship, riding off the momentum from that championship he got in mid-April. Three wide to the inside, late in the going in the Great American Race. It's going to be three laps to go this time by Isaac Nichols, Elijah Gordon on this inside lane. The winner, I think, is going to come from the inside lane at this point. It seems too strong. Marty Johnson, he's going to make it four wide late into going. The number 32, and they're four wide in Daytona 500 with three laps to go. If they crash, that's going to end the race under caution. They're going to figure it out, and we're going to keep on racing. Julius Anderson, if you see him, give him a high five. He figured that one out very well. He might not win this race, but he deserves a lot of respect after forcing that four-wide situation to not exist anymore. Marty Johnson, he won the smooth best. Will he win the Daytona 500? We also got Isaac Nichols here in the number 83 and Elijah Gordon, who has not won since season four in this series. Two laps to go in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, Daytona 500 for season number six. We're going to go for what again? And Marty Johnson still out front. I think they're going to figure it out, however. Blaine Key's going to clear the 34 of Al Legacy on the outside lane. Here comes Elijah Gordon, the number five to the inside of Isaac Nichols. Chris Skinlord is here as well, but Marty Johnson trying to defend in the number 32. They're four wide for second. This could be it. Chris Skinlord in the 21. Oh boy, will they figure it out? I think they will, but Chris Skinlart's taking the lead, or is he? It's the white flag for Marty Johnson in the Daytona 500. Cameron Garlington on this inside lane with a great chance of winning this race. But it's Chris Skinlart, the 21 to the inside of the 32. The number 21 won the season four Daytona 500. Will it happen again for Wood Brothers Racing? Cameron Garlington in the 47. He's a defending champion. He has not won since season three. They're going to run into Tristan Allen. Marty Johnson will not win this race. Cameron Garlington with help from Daniel Bouchard and Jordan Lopez. The number 47 for JTD Doherty Racing. My man Cameron Garlington to the inside. And you know who's going to win it? It's going to be the season three champion. Cameron Garlington does it. He wins the Daytona 500 in season six of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. How about that for the number 47? Remember what I said before that restart. I was looking at some of those guys back in there, and I'm saying, you know what? If they work together, then they might work their way up front, and they might get the win, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did it. Well, they did it, and that guy who did it was Cameron Garlington, the winner of the Daytona 500 in Season 6 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. It wasn't a rookie this time. It was the Season 3 champion getting his first win in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series since the finale race in Season number 3. When I say Cameron Grillington does it, that was a reference to that very awesome finish in Season 3, by the way. Cameron Garlington. Cameron got you the owner. Those Camerons, man, that's a good name to have right now. Wins the Daytona 500. How about that one for Cameron Garlington at the end? I saw that 47 to the right behind Chris Skinlart, and I'm like, he's going to get to the inside of him. He just is. 
and Tristan Allen. He pushed Marty Johnson to a, uh, a win in the Meliella Smooth Fest on Monday. He got smack right in the way of him in this race. That just killed his chances. But Cameron Gurlington has won the Daytona 500 in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, driving at number 47. That 47 saw a lot of success last year with Stuart Gratton driving the car. And it's already found a lot of success this season in Season 6 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Cameron Gurlington is a great guy. Y you know what? When I said, subscribe to this guy, whoever he is, oh, that's the guy. Camo Stealth makes great races. The longest-running Interloy member. He's a great friend of mine. But trust me, I did not rig that. You can't rig one of these things. Just, it's too hard to make, to rig it and it not be obvious. But Cameron Gurlington, a huge congratulations to the Season 3 Chick-fil-A Cup Series Championship, or champion, I should say. He joins Jesse Turner as a Daytona 500 champion and a Chick-fil-A Cup Series champion. And uh, how about that JTD Doherty Racing Team? Cameron Gaju, the owner. You know, Cameron Gaju, as a driver, he never made the chase. But the first race he's an owner, he gets in. How about that? Cameron Garlington, the winner of the Daytona 500. And uh, he can thank Daniel Bouchard at the end of that race. The rookie driver pushed him to the win at the end. Bouchard almost got him at the line, but I just knew Garlington had it. It was just like last year. I could just tell. that When that 47 got around that 21, Garlington had two cars helping him. Skinner only had one. Garlington... Just no question he was going to win the race, and he is the winner of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series Season 6 Daytona 500. The first time a veteran driver, with the exception of Turner, has... Well, Cody Hagen won in Season 3, but he's not around anymore. But this is the first time since Cody Hagen that a veteran driver has won this race, and uh, it was a great race here. The Daytona 500 is always a fantastic race. This and the Indianapolis 250, which was last week, two of my favorite races to record every single year. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, of course, Cameron Garlington, he's in the chase for season number six of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series with this win. And uh, that 47 team looking pretty strong here in season number six. There are the rest of the results. Quite a few guys finished in today's race. Didn't have any, you know, huge, huge ones. Um, but uh, did have a couple guys flip. That was Jay Jefferson, Matt Dalio. They're finishing in the final two positions. A little unfortunate for those guys there. But, hey, it's a long season. If you get a win, you're in the chase automatically. And you don't even have to be in the top 30 in the points either. There isn't any role like that here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. All you need to do is win and be a full-time driver, of course. If you're a part-timer, it doesn't really count. But if you're a full-timer and you win, you're in the chase, and you're going to be battling for a championship. But anyways, Garlington is going to be doing just that this season in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Season number six, the winner of the Season 6 Daytona 500. Got to thank you guys so much for liking and subscribing and watching. You know, it, And honestly, it shouldn't matter to me. But it does because, you know, I know you guys care. And I'm glad you guys enjoy it. I think what I really like about it is the fact that I'm making you guys happy. That's what I want to do with these races. And I said this last week as well. You know, the reason why I do this is to make you guys happy. I enjoy it. it, it I have a passion for it. And I hope you guys have a passion for watching it. And to make you guys happy and to see you guys liking the video shows that you guys are enjoying it. And that just warms my heart that, hey, you know what? I'm being a blessing to somebody. And uh, it's pretty nice. And, uh... I'm really glad I can be here. It's so awesome to, to have all these people around me. You guys are some of the greatest people I know. Um, and uh, God bless you all, of course. I always say that. And I hope he blesses you all in life. And uh, I just can't thank you guys enough for just being here. And uh, it's so awesome what we've been able to do the past couple of years on this channel. And we got a lot more big things to come up as well. I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this race and just enjoy what I do enjoy all the races that I've done you know I put a lot of time put a lot of effort into this because I like it I love doing it I love yelling to a microphone watching cars going around in circles you know it might seem crazy but you know what that's what I do and I think I do at least a sort of decent job at it and uh, you know what I like it and if I could make money off of this I would this would be my job but unfortunately I can't um, so I have to pursue other passions in life accounting um but you know what i'm still gonna do this you know for as long as i if, as long as i live basically i just love it so much and i uh, hope you guys stick around as well you guys are such a blessing to me and i hope i'm a blessing to you and god bless you all yes yet, yet again y'all are wonderful people and i hope the lord blesses you today and forever and uh this is awesome to have you all here anyways thank you guys so much for watching this was a blast to record it's a blast to record every single year and i hope you guys enjoy it
I'm going to stop saying that. I say that way too much. But I really do hope you guys enjoyed. Because like I said, I put a lot of time and effort into this. And, uh, you know, it's just nice when you hit that like button. But you know what? Don't feel forced to do so. If you don't want to, don't do it. I don't want you to feel like you have to like it. Because you know what? The force you to like it isn't right. It's not about the likes. It's not about the views. It's not about the subscribers. It's about the friends. And that's the biggest blessing I've ever had here on YouTube. It's the friends I've made. And it's just such a blessing. I've talked long enough. Here are the points for the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Season number six. Of course, we had the bonus points from... The dual races, so they're not going to exactly line up to the way they finished here for the Daytona 500. But I'm pretty sure Cameron Garlington is going to be the points leader um, in the number 47. I could be wrong, but I do know that Garlington's already locked into the chase, so it's not too much of an issue for him. Because, you know, he can just do whatever the next 15 races and be just fine. But anyways, congratulations to Cameron Garlington, the winner of the Daytona 500 in Season 6 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. And thank you guys so much for watching. It has been a blast here during Speed Weeks, and the season has just started. Summer has just started. Next race here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series is going to be the Kids Colors 500 at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. It's going to be a 65 lapper there at the Atlanta Motor Speedway, by the way. And uh, we'll just have to see how that one goes when the real season begins and we start filling up that chase grid. Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching once again. I've said that like 20 times already, but you know what? It means a lot to me, and I greatly appreciate it. And congratulations to Cameron Garlington for winning the Daytona 500. Thank you guys yet again for everything that you do. I can never say that enough. And I will see you guys later. Stars up in the sky, we keep on shining